most amazing artist. I hope you are having an awesome day today. And welcome to week four of our perspective dream bedrooms. We've done a lot of work on this project so far. We've drawn our room using one point perspective and our vanishing point back here. We have outlined it or finalized our drawing, adding any other details we wanted to. And last week we practiced creating a value scale using a couple of different materials. So we are going to use value today to add some shadows and color and highlights to our drawing. Out of the two materials that you practiced with last week, you're just gonna choose one and that is what you're going to use. So my favorite was crayons. So I have my crayons here ready to go. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start choosing some colors that I wanna use for my bedroom. Now, if you're using just a regular pencil like this, then you don't have to choose any colors because you're just gonna be using black and gray and white. So what you're gonna do with the pencil is exactly what I'm about to show you with my crayon. You're gonna start using your pencil to add shadows, color in your white space with some mid-tones, and then you can take your eraser and erase any areas you want to be the lightest or your highlights. But if you're using something with color, then I'm gonna show you how to kind of layer your colors together to create some really beautiful shadows. Let's start with my bed. First, what I'm gonna do is I've just chosen a color and I've chosen blue-green. And I'm going to very lightly just color in one of these sections. And I want my flowers on my bed to be a, a different color, so I'm just gonna keep those blank for now. After I get done adding a base layer of color or a very light layer of color to my bed sheets, then I'll be right back to show you how I'm gonna start adding shadows. Okay, so I've got my base layer done and I just barely pressed down on my paper. I've used a very light pressure for my first layer. And for my second layer, I'm gonna focus on the corners of my bed and I'm going to press down a little bit harder. Remember with value, we're trying to create a gradient. We don't want it to be super duper dark and then all of a sudden get light. We have to go through all the stages of a value scale where it starts very light and then it slowly gets darker and darker and darker and darker until it is the darkest. So on the edges of my bed, I'm gonna press down a little bit harder and as I get towards my lighter tones, which are in the middle of my bed, I am going to pull up on my crayon. And by doing that, by starting hard with my pressure and then slowly lightening it up a little bit, bringing my crayon up off of my paper, it is blending those values together. And I'm choosing to start my shadows on the corners and sides of my bed. So the right side and the left side, my shadows are starting here and they're slowly getting lighter as they go towards the middle of my bed. Same for down here on my blanket, I'm starting my shadow um, underneath this line, this side of my bed or the end of my bed. And uh, the shadow is slowly getting lighter as it goes towards the bottom. All right, I think that looks good for my second layer. Now I'll go in and press down even harder. Remember last week when we were practicing this, we talked about not pressing down so hard to where you might accidentally break your drawing or your coloring tool just hard enough to make your color darker. And if I think of a real bed with something placed on it, like my Nintendo Switch here, there would be a shadow underneath that Nintendo Switch. So I am gonna put a darker shadow underneath where that switch would be. And I'll just do it on one side of my Nintendo Switch because usually shadows in real life are only on one side of an object. They're only going towards one side, either the left side or the right side. I wouldn't do a shadow under the whole thing, just on one side, and I wanna blend that shadow into the rest of my blanket. And to blend, I'm just going over it with the same exact color and very little pressure because I want this dark shadow right here to blend in to the rest of my blanket. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to switch my colors because with crayons and any other colored tool that you might be using, you can layer your colors on top of one another. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a darker shade like purple. You could even choose black if you want to. Um, I could do a dark green and try to make my shadows darker. 
I think I will choose a green and I'll try to see what that looks like. If you would like to practice with some different colors, you can on the back. So maybe I'll see what green and this blue green look like together. And honestly, I think that's a little bit too light actually. Let me layer this first and then the green on top. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay, so I really like how that looks. So I will go ahead and add it to my shadow. So I'm just gonna layer that green on top of where I added my shadow and it makes it a lot darker and it makes my bed look a lot more interesting when I have different colors blending together to create value. With whatever material you have chosen to use, we're really all focusing on the same thing and that is the pressure that we are using to add our value. If we're pressing down very hard, it's gonna be dark. If I press down barely at all, it's going to be light. So it doesn't matter what tool we are using, what matters really is the pressure at which we are adding this material to our paper. And I think that looks pretty good for now. I can always go back in later and try to add some more. And actually I think under my little stuffed animal here, there would be a shadow. So I'll add that and I'll blend it into the rest of my bed and that looks pretty good. And I'll just color my flowers in like normal. And notice I have really taken my time on this. This one little section of my bedroom has taken me like five to six minutes to finish um, because I'm not scribbling. I'm really taking my time and focusing on the pressure, focusing on the gradient of my shadows, really trying to layer my colors or my tones on top of one another to get them to blend nicely, just like we did on our value scale. Okay, I'm starting on my ground now, and these are wooden floors, so I'm gonna use a brownish color. Um, but you guys can use any colors that you want to if you've decided to add color. And remember the first thing that I'm gonna do, and this goes for everybody, no matter what material you have chosen to use, do a very light layer first on the entire section of whatever you're coloring. Very light layer, just like I did with my blue green over here. And then, after you add one layer of a very light, then we can go in and start pressing down a little bit harder to add some shadows. And if I think of a bedroom, it's gonna be darker towards the back probably. And as these boards come closer to me, they're gonna be lighter. So I'm gonna focus on adding my shadow up towards the base or this back wall. And then as it gets closer to me, I am going to lighten up on the pressure so that my colors will be lighter. So as you start adding value, start super light and then gradually start adding your darker areas a little bit at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my drawing, finish coloring it and adding value using some different colors um, and trying to layer my colors on top of one another. Um, remember, it's a good idea to practice layering colors on the back of your paper to see if you like them or not and try to find some combinations of colors that you do like together. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up, take my time and adding my value and my shadows and my beautiful colors and I'll be right back to show you what my final bedroom looks like. Just finished adding value and color to my drawing and I wanted to talk about a couple of things with you guys before I go and that is if you decide to leave like your ceiling white or in my case I chose to put some cow print on these two walls and cow print is black and white uh, we still have to add shading to any white areas and to do that you would just use a gray crayon or a gray color of whatever material you are using and you just lightly add a very light shadow to the corners and the sides of your walls. Also we need to think of objects on top of other things like our bed is on top of our floor so there would be a shadow underneath our bed 
this rug is on top of my floor so there'd be a little shadow under the rug. So think about shadows in real life as you are adding shadows and highlights and color and value and all that good stuff to your drawing. All right, I hope you guys have had a lot of fun during this project and you've learned a lot about one point perspective and value. I can't wait to see how your final bedrooms turn out. I know they're gonna be amazing because you guys are amazing. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.